This is the Panama Canal, one of the greatest marvels of modern engineering that revolutionized global trading. However, there is bad news for the international trading community. The Panama Canal appears to be drying up. For months, vessels have formed long queues, time has been wasted, millions have been lost, and the cost of consumer goods has risen dramatically. The canal, also known as the Big Ditch, is extremely important to the global economy. It is the link between 2,000 ports and 170 countries engaging in international trade. Maritime vessels ranging from merchant ships and huge cargo vessels use this passage to get to their destinations quicker and to save fuel. For 100 years, the Panama Canal has conveyed millions of ships around the world, carrying merchandise to stores in different ports and countries. Unfortunately, this man-made engineering marvel is today under serious threat. In fact, the water level at the canal's main lake, Lake Gatun, has dramatically gone seven feet below the usual seasonal standard, meaning there is trouble. Stick around as we unravel the thrilling and tragic story of this iconic hub of international maritime trade. First, let's go back in time to see how this great canal came about. In the 1500s, famous Spanish explorer Vasco Nunez de Balboa, during one of his voyages, realized that a narrow strip of land separated the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. He took this information back to the Spanish kingdom. The king, Charles I was thrilled by this discovery and sent the regional governor to survey a route along the Chagres River. But the excitement turned to distress as the task seemed impossible and no route was found. Disappointed with the failure, the king ordered for the mission to be aborted with immediate effect. 400 years later, next-door neighbors France took interest in the project and attempted to find this route. Led by famed engineer Count Ferdinand de Lesseps, who previously built the Suez Canal in Egypt, construction work began in 1880. However, the French camp soon met with challenges as heavy rainfall and terrible sickness plagued them. Cases of yellow fever and malaria destabilized the workers, and soon enough, the project was abandoned. Engineer de Lesseps realized that a sea-level canal was too difficult to build and instead chose to reorganize his workforce towards constructing a lock canal. By then, the French government was fed up with the constant failures and pulled off its funding from the project in 1888. Fast forward to the year 1902, the United States under President Theodore Roosevelt purchased this French asset for $40 million. Construction work began in 1904, with the engineers devising different means to overcome the challenges of rainfall and sickness. Nine years later in 1913, after so many deaths, terrible weather conditions, and a shortage of funds, the grand project was finally completed. President Woodrow Wilson commissioned the canal on August 14, 1914, a few months before World War II began. The cost of executing this huge project was the most expensive in U.S. history at the time, amounting to about $375 million. Also, about 56,000 men from different countries were recruited to work on the canal of which about 25,000 deaths were recorded in the process. However, on December 31, 1999, the Panama Canal Authority took full control of the canal with respect to the treaty that was signed by U.S. President Jimmy Carter and Panama's leader Omar Torrijos 22 years back. In the course of its 100 years existence, the canal has proven to be an important trade route vital to the global economy. It gradually became a leading route for all the world's cargo ships and international trade as more vessels started taking its journey through the Panama Canal. Also, frequent cases of ship traffic congestion caused delays in transit as ships stayed at the canal for weeks and even months before gaining passage. In view of this, the Panamanian government in 2007 set aside $5 billion to expand the canal by constructing two sets of locks on the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. Also, a third set of locks was added to the existing two lanes which operated as water elevators raising ships to 82 feet above sea level. In retrospect, this expansion was the largest infrastructure project in the waterway since the canal's inception and was completed in 2016. 
The project led to an increase in daily transits and faster transit tons, as well as boosting Panama's GDP. But things began to go south for the Great Canal when the monster called climate change came knocking. Climate change poses a great threat to the canal's survival as in 2023, rainfall ceased. Reports have it that rainfall in Panama went below 30% average between March and October, which is a historic low. This calls for alarm among canal officials with the ensuing traffic congestion building up during the holiday shipping season. This isn't the first time the canal is suffering from water shortages, but it is becoming more frequent. Dubbed El Nino, this phenomenon occurred 140 years ago, when the first cases of fluctuating hot and dry weather conditions plagued the Central American country. Well, history seems to always repeat itself. For the past quarter of a century, Panama has experienced several devastating weather disasters caused by El Nino. One such disaster was between 2013 and 2015 when the country witnessed its driest seasons and also got hit by four hurricanes. Presently, the country is experiencing something quite similar. But for us to fully understand the gravity of things, it is important to know how the Panama Canal operates. As vessels approach, canal authorities are consulted to obtain permission for free passage. Once this permission is granted, the vessel moves forward and enters the first set of locks. On getting into the locks, the chamber is filled with water in order to raise the vessel to the height of the second lock. Water coming into the locks is sourced from either of the two artificial lakes, Alajuela and Gatun. Once water levels have risen to the height of the next locks, the gates are opened to allow the ship to move forward. This process is repeated three times for the three locks that guide the canal until the ships are raised above sea level, which is about 82 feet. All ships coming from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific go through Lake Gatun. The entire trip from the Atlantic to the Pacific takes an average of 8 to 10 hours. This process is also repeated for ships coming from the Pacific Ocean. The procedure takes up 5 billion cubic meters of water, amounting to 200 million gallons per ship. Such huge volumes of water are channeled from the lakes into the canal, with the lakes getting water from rainfall. As rain ceased, fresh water supplies to the canal fell to only 3 billion cubic meters, which is far short of the 5.25 billion required to operate the canal. Such a drastic reduction now means that the Panama Canal can no longer convey huge vessels with heavy cargo. In October, local authorities in charge of the canal cut down the number of vessels that could make daily transits from the usual 40 to only 32. However, container ships have less to worry about passage since they usually reserve spots before embarking on journeys, but the main challenge lies in the bulk shipping vessels. This is because post-Panamax vessels, as they are called, don't usually have time to book passes in advance, so delay could be fatal in missing its next assignment. For that reason, bulk shipping companies have the option to either risk waiting for days at the canal or pay an outrageous fee to jump the queue. If that doesn't favor them, they can also choose to sail an entire continent out of the way around the southern tips of Africa and South America to reach their destinations. In some cases, Shipping companies pay hundreds and even millions of dollars to move their cargo ahead of the queue, thereby doubling the cost of using the canal in normal conditions. This painstaking process has affected the world's supply chain, inflating the cost of goods with consumers, often the ones to bear the brunt of these bottlenecks. The traffic reduction at the canal is expected to last for a few months, sparking concerns about supply chains and inflation. Unfortunately, this drought has not only affected trading activities but also the supply of fresh water to the local population. This is because the Panama Canal is also the source of drinking water for most Panamanians who are now experiencing water shortages. This has led to several protests in the last couple of months. How the Panama government intends to solve this national dilemma is one to look out for, but for now, Situations are quite tense as the country continues to experience the negative effects of climate change. That's a wrap for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel.
Your support means a lot to us and helps us create more content. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. See you next time.